All right, so I want to make a video continuing on that discussion we had about potentially how do you secure your Next.js application or your applications in general so that you don't leak sensitive data over to the front end, right? As the last video I showed you, it's very easy to do a Prisma call and accidentally get some type of fields that you never want to send over to your front end. So what are some industry standards that many projects follow to prevent this from happening? So I have a diagram right here, and this is kind of representing the leaderboard that we saw, right? So this is a leaderboard here a leaderboard, a React server component, and all of this stuff that's behind this line is technically running on the server, right? So it won't get leaked over to the front end, at least when you're using Next.js, until you pass something as props to a use client component. There's probably other nuances to this as well that I haven't really thought about, but if you were to take some data, you know, fetch some data from Prisma, and then send it over in a prop to a use client component, that's when all bets are off. You just open up your dev tools, you go look at the file, and you'll see a bunch of kind of hard-coded data that's in there. I showed that in the last video, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. But I want to show you an industry standard called a DTO, a data transfer object. Some people call it a mapper that you can put inside of your controller. Some people call this an interactor. Some people call this a use case, which basically takes the data that you're about to send back and it sends it through one more layer of protection where you can do whitelisting um, or just like filtering out and removing stuff that should never get over to certain um, areas of your code base, right? All right, so we want to kind of prevent that data from ever leaving here. And if this was an API instead of Next.js, it's the same paradigm. This, this line right here would be your API call, right? So you want to prevent data from ever leaving your API by using this, this mapper slash DTO. So let's get a breakdown of how this works. I have page.tsx, which is my leaderboard page. And sometime during initialization, you'll see it does request to get all the users with their results count. So this is just a function call, right? There's no API. That's how React Server components work. You just can write function calls to interact with your database and grab data. So if we look at this function call and you scroll down, notice it has some logic to fetch users from the database, right? I also added some selects so that I never leak any type of sensitive data. I'm only selecting the bare minimum I need to make this page work, which is one good way to prevent um, security issues, I guess you could say. And then finally, I'm returning that data. But I'm going to share with you something called a DTO or a mapper, right? I wrote my own. This is called a safe loader, where basically you pass in a Zod schema, and it's going to call your function here with the arguments that you pass in. And then it's going to take the outputs and it's going to run it through that, that Zod pars, right? So that means that anything that you define in that Zod schema will get stripped out. I think there's also a way to say like dot strict. I don't know if it's on here or if it's somewhere else. But basically that'll make it throw exceptions if there's data that should never be in those outputs, okay? So I have this custom function I made where you basically provide your output validation right here. And then you provide the function that's trying to fetch some data. So this code that you're looking at right here, if you're confused, that's this. This is a mapper or a DTO. And you can leave in the comments if like you argue that this isn't a DTO, but basically what we're doing is we're saying everything that this thing returns down here, we want to pass it through another layer, another function to make sure that everything that's returned matches this schema. Okay, so in our case, we're using Zod, like I mentioned. We're saying that the thing that has to be returned from this loader has to be an array and it has to have objects that have this type of format, right? It has to have an ID, a name, an image, accuracy, and results. Okay? You can also specify strings, numbers, whatever. You can put regex in here if you want to. But what this allows you to do is that for whatever reason, let's say someone comes down here and says, you know what? I'm going to actually put email here and I'm going to see what happens. All right, so I'm going to run this through a debugger and I just want to show you how this kind of works. There we go. So let's look at users. Again, we have a DTO. So that even though the backend code is requesting email from the database, notice that it never comes over to like this React server component. So that is the idea of using a, a DTL is you basically, you take the data that comes back and you just, you know, omit stuff. Okay. And let me just further show that this is actually working. I'm going to put a debugger here. I'm going to go ahead and save and I will restart the page. Run this at some point, this will hit this debugger. And if I were to hover over users, notice that users has email in it, right? So this is the data that we don't want to be able to send over to the React server component, or if you're doing API, you don't want that to be sent over the wire on the API call. So that is where you need to use some type of DTO. Now, some people actually do like ESX classes and create like 
a class that has properties on it and like has a constructor that takes in some type of data like maybe you could pass users to it and then that constructor would only pick certain fields out of that data that comes in and set them up it's the same thing right it's this, it's basically the same idea you just want to filter out certain fields and not allow them to ever get to the front end so that's basically what a dto is i mean like there's more nuance to it and every team like has this different idea go go read like clean architecture by uncle bob like he'll kind of walk you through how to create dtos i would say most like larger projects with like senior engineers on them who have been in the industry for a while are probably doing some type of approach like this and there's a whole another um, concept i haven't really talked about there's like business entities where if you're using like a repository approach pattern where you have like a rep repository layer that's the thing that fetches from the database and that thing is going to return some type of data structure in this case let's just say it's like an es6 class called a user so that you never have to know inside of here that this thing is using prisma so you return a class that has methods on it and it has a bunch of different private properties on it and methods for getting those properties methods for setting those properties and also a bunch of useful utility methods on these business entities. This is called like a business entity. So the idea is instead of calling Prisma inside of this loader, you would say like const users is equal to users repo dot get all, something like that. And then basically you don't want this to even know that Prisma exists, okay? And that's the idea. This thing would be like a user entity with a bunch of different methods on it. And you can further do more like data emission from there, right? You want to insulate your code from database changes. For example, if someone were to add in a, a new field to a database or rename a field, your code shouldn't break everywhere when that happens because these business entities are set up to map the data that comes back from your Prisma query into your own structure that you own in your code base. This is like a whole nother talk, business entities. And technically there could be like a DTO or a mapper here, which takes the data that comes back from Prisma, take, passes it to a DTO, and that DTO sends out a, a business entity that you can actually use methods on. Um, but I just wanted to focus on this part because that is the part that's gonna help you prevent from leaking information that you don't wanna leak to your front end. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little walkthrough. I've been kind of going through the code base, trying to apply this safe loader to any loader that I can find. So if that's something that you are looking to help contribute with, I would say you need to go through every single place that we're doing a Prisma call. That needs to live in a function somewhere and that needs to be using either a safe loader. And also we have actions. We're using server actions, for example, here. That should be using a safe action, okay? And technically we should extend safe action to also apply some type of filtering and um, parsing on the data that was returned. I do want to come through and like refactor this a little bit, um, but an action should have an input validation and then probably also an output validation. And then it should have an action. I'm getting into the weeds right now, um, but if anyone wants to kind of tackle that and you're looking for work of like, how can I contribute to Code Racer? This is what I'd say do. Refactor safe action to take an input validation, output validation, and an action. And make sure that every single place that we're calling an action validates what comes out. All right, that's all I want to share with you all. Hopefully that was um, not too over you guys' heads. Hopefully I didn't mess up explaining that, but that's all I wanted to share. So if you enjoyed watching, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You're welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out or talk to some other developers and get some help. Have a good day. Happy coding.